Hi, it's Rob Asher, CEO of Giraffe here. And in this video, I'm gonna introduce analytics, which is a new capability that we've built. Before I do it and get into the analytics, uh, it's gonna help for us to have a design. So let me do that first. I use the R shortcut to create a rectangle. I'm gonna set this usage to residential. Uh, hit the T button to get into 3D. Copy paste that across, drop the number of levels and maybe put a, a nice park between these two buildings that I've created. I'll set the usage to landscape. And fade the 3D buildings back. Just align these things. Maybe respond to context a bit more. Provide people driving past with a glimpse of this park. Maybe reduce overshadowing of it slightly by pulling this building both back and away from the north. Finally, I'm gonna add a few trees, just so that the council knows that I am greening and cooling the city. And I've got now this nice little scheme nestled amongst the trees. Okay, so you can see that in very few clicks, I've created a scheme. Uh, it's a master plan for this new area. And the classic um, giraffe report is this urban tab, which shows you gross net and saleable areas broken down by usages um, and remembering that in giraffe usages describe typology or product um, essentially they are a mix of assumptions so for example if i go to the retail usage that's got efficiencies floor to floor heights hard costs and soft costs and i can create as many usages as i want but think of usages as a collection of assumptions that go into the, the urban tab. And what we've done with analytics is basically allowed you to create your own urban tab. So I'm just gonna edit the project boundary so everything's inside the boundary and we're getting accurate site areas. I could be doing this by pulling the information from the parcel uh, layer, but I'm just doing it quickly now like this. And then let's jump into analytics and create a report. So what we can do is just pull in uh, a default template. These, we, we've created these four, an environmental report, zoning, and, and a couple of financial models. If you have your own, you can pull them in from any project you've ever done. Um, but in, our, in this case, let's start with a blank slate since this is a tutorial video. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a straight line FISO on this little um, precinct over here. And I'm gonna do a bit of modeling around the environmental impact of this precinct, canopy cover, soft landscape cover um, and some things like that. So let's just have a, a category called the built form, which I normally make like a nice orange because that's the color of buildings. And then I click on this category to create measures. So a category in analytics is very self-explanatory. It's like a heading. The measures are our name for a line item. And all a measure is, is something that connects properties from the giraffe model the usages, the drawings, which have areas, which have assumptions, creates an equation, and then expresses the output of the equation in the, in the analytics toolbar. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the number of, uh, the total gross area of residential in my report. So let's say gross residential floor area, and it's gonna be in square meters, it could be square feet, whatever it is. Um, and I'm gonna reach into the, the model and find a property. And what I'm gonna look for is gross area. Now, you can see the giraffe is saying, look, there's four features in the model that, that have an area property, right? You'll remember our model has some retail, some residential, and some landscape. I don't want the area of the retail and the landscape, so I'm gonna only apply this to residential use case, residential uses. And then you can see now there's only two features that have gross area and are residential. And I'm just gonna pull the, the gross area out of the model and the operation is sum. So it's gonna get the gross area of the first feature and give it back to me. And then the gross area of the second feature, and then it's gonna add them all together. I could find the minimum, the max, the av, you know, of, the, of those areas, but I wanna add them all up. So I click save and I have my first measure. It has a category. It applies to a particular usage, in this case, residential. It has a name, a formula, which in this case is just A, return what you get, a unit, uh, and then I can you know, edit, duplicate, or delete it. And if we come back to analytics, uh, you can see that uh, that 
measure is in the report. And if I increase my residential tower, the area goes up. But if I click on this retail and I increase my, my retail levels, the area doesn't go up because gross residential floor area is only looking at the residential usages in the model. So that's good, it's working as expected. So that's kind of powerful, but I think let's get a little bit uh, more involved. So I'm gonna click on this to get back to this menu and create a new measure. And I'm gonna say um, average dwelling size. And in this instance, I'm not gonna measure from a component. I'm just gonna put in a constant. So I'm gonna, I don't need any components to go into my formula. I don't need A, B, C. It's not algebra, it's just a constant. So I'm gonna delete that. And I'm gonna say my average dwelling size is 100 square meters. Save changes. And then I'm gonna create a new measure. And I'm gonna say, total dwellings and what we're going to do is instead of going for a model property we're going to go for an existing measure which is the gross residential floor area and then we're going to go for another measure which is the average dwelling size and then I'm going to divide the gross residential floor area by the average dwelling size but before I do that I'm going to multiply the floor area by 0 0.8 to get rid of corridors etc and then divide by by, and not by 100, we've parameterized the, the average dwelling size, so I'm gonna divide it by B. Uh, and I need to set a unit, which is gonna be dwellings. And I'm gonna wrap this in an integer so that it rounds it. And I'm gonna save changes. There we go. We now have the gross residential floor area, an average dwelling size, and a total number of dwellings. Now, of course, Giraffe is much more sophisticated than this in terms of your average dwelling size. Giraffe allows you in the residential typology to set a unit mix and size per, you know, per unit. But this is a cool high order examination of it. You know? So you can use these inputs and assumptions to drive the, the equations, or you can set your own, just a, like a simple one over here. Um, and then I've got my total dwellings. And Final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the gross residential floor area and I'm gonna find my gross retail area and I'm gonna look for, rather than residential, I'm gonna look for retail and I'm just gonna return the, road, the gross area. Happy days. All right, now we can just drag this out and we can talk about, you know, it's sorted, etc. This report is now uh, created and fantastic. You know, I think one thing I may want to do is just bold this line because this is the most important line, say, for me. Um, there's my total dwellings, 115, uh, and we've got a build form report. Okay, let's start getting a bit financial. Come to category, uh, I'm going to say costs, and I'm going to create it. And costs should be red because they are dangerous and expensive. Save changes. Costs. New measure. Now, uh, I'm going to say total hard costs, right? And I'm going to put this in dollars. And um, our model has uh, gross area, and it also has hard costs at the usage level, right? And not only um, does it have hard costs for usages like retail, residential, and landscape, it has hard costs for trees. And so you can see we've only got four features in the model that have an area, but we have nine features that have a hard cost because a tree doesn't have an area, it's a point. So what's gonna happen in this case, I'm gonna write the formula which is gonna be A times B, so the gross area times the hard cost per unit area, which to give us the total cost. And what Giraffe's gonna do is it's gonna loop through every feature in the model, and if it has an area defined, it will multiply the area by the hard cost. If it doesn't have an area, it will ignore that feature. If we find a feature without a hard cost, it will also ignore that feature. So the way that this property selector works is it goes to every feature in the model, sees if it has the property that we've set. If it, if it has all the properties needed to run the formula, it executes the formula, and then it, it does the operation at the end, adds them all together, or averages them, or finds the minimum, the maximum. So I'm gonna save those changes. These are the hard costs for the buildings. Now, 
we could have set a measure that was average hard cost per built form, uh, like we did with average dwelling size. But what we're doing in this instance is we're actually saving the hard cost assumption at the usage level. So if we come to usages and we go to hard costs, you will see that every usage we have has a different hard cost, which is really cool, right? And because we have this residential and these retail, we have both of these in the model. There's the residential, there's the retail. When Giraffe goes through and calculates for each feature with a hard cost in an area, it's applying the different rate for every feature. So it's, it's doing quite a sophisticated operation here. Um, now for soft costs, what we could do is say, uh, soft costs is it's also in dollars and we could just say look it's equal to hard costs uh, times you know 15 percent 15 percent and save change that way or because we've got soft costs saved per usage or per some usages we could um, we could input it that way and remember you know this is a, a soft cost per square meter in this instance you can put, you can edit the usage data or the input parameters across your usages from this menu here, which is extremely powerful for, for rapid editing. Let's for now just, you know, use this equation here, which is A times uh, 15, um, and it's referencing the, the total hard costs. And I'm gonna add a couple more costs. Let's say finance costs, and that's in dollars. And it's just gonna be, one, two, three, so it's a million bucks. One, two, three, one, two, three, save changes, million dollars. And now let's add a developer fee, something like that. A developer fee, and that's in dollars. And here we're just gonna add a couple of measures. So we're gonna add our soft co hard costs, our financing costs, and our soft costs. And we're just gonna go A plus B plus C and we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.03, 3% developer fee, save changes, done. Now we could keep adding contingencies, we could break this down, you can see in as many ways as you want. This is essentially an Excel model, or a spreadsheet, a kind of a spreadsheet. Here's our costs. Now let's talk about income. Uh, and, and for this income, rather than look at the, the average dwelling size, I'm gonna, um, I'm going to jump into the, the residential usage and, and go through this. So you can see I've got a unit size, a unit mix down here, so I can change the percentage that are one, two, or three bed, and a unit price. Now, unit price can represent a terminal sale price. So here in Australia, we build units to sell, whereas often in America, it's a build to rent market where you, you build the, the unit, uh, you rent it out, you stabilize it over five years, you get your NOI, you, you set a cap rate, and that's how you you sell these assets. This unit price can represent the number for both of those approaches. Terminal value, like if I'm gonna sell this thing for 600,000, I can just set it to 600,000. Or if I'm gonna rent it for 600 a month, I set it to 600. Or if I wanna put it weekly, I can put it for, you know, 200, whatever the right number is, right? That price can serve whatever you want. Um, but I'll show you how it works out in in everything, uh, sorry, in, in Giraffe Analytics. So let's go to categories and create an income category and it is green, income is green and the environment is green. Save changes, okay, we come to income, new measure, right, apartment. So let's call it, let's say, total potential apartment rent and it's gonna be in dollars and I'm gonna look for price, dwelling price total, right? And what this dwelling price total does is it, multi it finds the number of dwellings in the giraffe model, as in it takes the area, looks at your mix, looks at your dwelling sizes, sees how many of each type of dwelling will fit, and then it multiplies them by the relevant price. So this is a very powerful shorthand. So I can say A, Right, that's gonna be the price. Now the price that I've put in, I've decided represents monthly rent. So to annualize it, I'm gonna times it by 12. So that's three million bucks. Okay, I'm gonna create a new measure, which is vacancy rate, vacancy factor, and that's gonna be a percent, and it's a constant. And I'm gonna say, once we stabilize, we're 5% vacant. So then I'll say, actual uh, apartment rent, APT rent in dollars equals 
total potential apartment rent um, vacancy factor. Okay, so you take the total potential and you multiply it by one minus the percentage of these things that are vacant. So you do that. So it goes from three million one seven nine down to three million. So it changes. Okay, so you can see how we're building this thing up. We've got our costs, we've got our bill form. Now, just notice here, the total apartment rent here, I'm use, using the giraffe uh, usage, residential usage here, whereas the actual number of dwellings, I'm using a different methodology to estimate here. So this is actually not gonna work here. These are not concomitant, they're not the same. Um, I'm gonna add, let's add a, a one more income line. I'm gonna say this is retail rent. And here I'll just do a, a shorthand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do dollars and I'm gonna look for net rent uh, from retail. So filter the model just to retail. And then, uh, and that net rents per unit area. So I'm gonna, I need the sellable area. Um, so giraffe out the box returns the gross, the net and the saleable area. So it's the saleable, the rentable bit that you can rent times the amount of rent you get. And then I'm just gonna put in a, a vacancy factor of 95%, right? something like that. So, or 5%, so I'm gonna just factor that down a little bit. Um, and just on that net saleable, net rentable, every usage in giraffe has an efficiency and a sell efficiency um, that carries through in every way we think about areas, a gross, a net, and a saleable. And so that's that out of the box. Um, this saleable area, or I could get the, uh, if you know, the gross, the net, or the saleable. You can always choose whichever one you want. So that's super convenient. Okay, so now we've got a, a, a apartment rent that we've kind of worked out quite explicitly, and then retail, you know, with a bunch of lines, and then retail rent. We've just shorthanded our way there. The net rent I'm pulling from a property, which is net rent, and that if you come over here and look at net rent you can see that we have set net rent for retail at 250 bucks a square meter per year in this instance. All right, so that's, let's just um, add that up uh, so we get a total income. Total income in dollars and we're just gonna add it all up. So it's gonna be, uh, actual apartment rent, so that, and then it's uh, uh, retail rent. Sorry, I didn't need that at all up, just those two. And um, it's just A plus B. It's the apartment rent plus the retail rent, save. I'm gonna add um, an expense ratio, which is a percentage, and it's a constant, and I'll say it's 30%. Right. Save changes. And so then I'll add a new measure, which is net operating income which is equal to, sorry, it's in dollars. It's equal to total income, right? This income figure, remember it's, it's factored down by vacancies and I'm gonna add the expense ratio and it's A times one minus B. So 30% of that 3 million disappears, we're left with 2.2 million, that sounds about right. I hate doing maths on these videos because I am liable to get it wrong, but I hope that's good. Okay, so now I've got a net operating income and I've saved that. And what's cool now, you know, sometimes nice to have this expensive ratio, this expense ratio explicitly modeled out because I can go, okay, well, let's say if we, we can tighten that up and we save those changes and then your NOI goes up, right? So it's sometimes nice to make that explicit as opposed to this retail rent, you have to come into the equation to, to change this parameter, which is this vacancy ratio, which we've hidden away but methodology, convenience, up to you. All right, we've got bill form, we've got costs, we've got income. Um, and now I guess we could build a report showing, um, putting in a cap rate and a terminal value. Why don't we do that to round it out? So a new category called report. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually a nice color for that, pink. And I'll save that and uh, go to report and go new measure and this is cap rate which is going to be a constant so I'll call this out so it's, it's five percent so that's percent so it changes and 
yeah, so terminal value uh, is, is going to be the cap rate. We'll need the cap rate. And we're going to need the total, the NOI, I guess. Well, don't know if it's gross on that. We divide B by A. Um, and put it in dollars, 48 million bucks. There we go. All right. So you could do margin on costs, return on costs, cap rate you know, price per dwelling, hard cost per dwelling, you know, whatever kind of report metric you need, you just build it in. I hope that's been helpful and um, I, I know it's quite a long video, but gone through everything and done a few examples, so clear on how to use the tool.